Good morning. It's nice, bright Sabbath morning. Perfect. We'd like you to join us in singing some of the early Advent songs this morning. The first one is How Far From Home. It's hymn number 439, if you'd like to use the hymnal. If not, you can sing with the words on the screen. Hymn 439. <laughs> to him number 441 and sing along with us I saw one weary
Good morning, church. Good morning. Ah, boy, that's what I like to hear. I like to hear voices. And it's so sparse this morning. But anyway, it's nice and warm here, and it's friendly, and we are with our Savior. Something for you to think about. When you were younger, and we're pretty much all adults here, do you remember your mom or dad saying to you, count your blessings? Mm. As an adult, did you say to your children, count your blessings? Now, what about these blessings? What are those blessings that our parents are talking about? Maybe our grandparents. I don't know. You know, they all kind of morph. I've heard it before so many times. Count your blessings. Are your blessings evident when you're happy? Are your blessings evident when you help someone out? Are you blessed when you left your keys someplace and you finally remember where they have been hiding from you? Are you blessed? What constitutes your blessing? What is that wonderful thing that's a blessing? Is it spirit-driven? Is it something that's from God that is out of the ordinary? You know, or is a blessing the time that you are able to reflect and talk with God when you're sick or when you're hurt or when your palm is opened by a cat's claw and it's bleeding ferociously? You know, are you thinking... Now, this has happened to me, not just somebody else I live with. <laughs> are, are you thinking about those little creatures that you have the opportunity to give a home to, you know? Or are you really mad because you're hurting? Or are you thinking about all those antibodies in your blood and those things that make your blood coagulate and thinking about how you were created with that blessing that you can heal. You know, we are blessed in so many ways that we take things for granted all too often. I'm sermonizing. I, I don't mean to be that way. But to the extent where I want to just push a little bit of a reset button that you can think about today, okay? And think about those blessings that come your way out of the blue. Anyway, so today, it's now it's time for testimonies and praise. So this week, as you look back on it, how are you blessed? How were you blessed? I was... Uh, where? Where's the hand? Okay, Marge. Michelle and Marge. I'm confused. <laughs> I was reminded of my frailty this, this week and um, working here with Dean in Alberta. And I jumped out of the bed of the pickup truck. You know, Dean's got this monster truck that tailgates like this. And I just hopped down and I hit the ground but I kept on going, you know, and it, I was jumped down onto the grass. So falling on the grass is okay, but falling on asphalt would not be. So I thank God that he kept me safe, no broken bones, didn't bite my tongue or my lip. So for me to remember that these 70-year-olds and 80-year-olds don't need to be jumping out of pickup trucks. <laughs> um, blessing is twofold. There's been somebody that has been laid up. I was asked to come help them out in the afternoons for a couple of weeks. Well, when I was in the house and saw they can pretty much 
take care of things in the house and that, I noticed the landscaping in the front of the house was very much high with weeds. So I offered to go out and do this project. And there was pushback from it. No, no, we don't want you to do that. I said, can you do this? No. I said, and I was asked to come over here and help you with things you could not do. So this is something I see you're not able to do. So it's taken longer than what I had anticipated, but it's a blessing to me to be able to do that, and amazingly, I'm not in a lot of pain while I'm doing more than a couple hours at a time I'm used to. That's one blessing. But the other blessing, as I tried to explain to the person and her daughter, for me is that I can come and help you. It gives me joy to know that you're happy because you like the way it looks after I finish the part. And that being said, they still want to pay me for this job. And I tried to explain to them, again, you take the blessing away from me when you want to spend money that I know you don't have to begin with being on a fixed income. But they were pushing about it, so we left that go. But like Dave was saying, we take so much for granted of being able to get up and go and do. I believe part of that reason is, is because we're too much thinking about ourselves and what the next move is going to be, our next plan to do, and it's all about us instead of somebody else. So part of my definition of blessing is to be able to look to others to see how you can help them instead of constantly helping yourself. Thanks, Michelle. Happy Sabbath. Um, Y'all know I hardly do this, so take this, because it might not happen again. Anyways, <laughs> um, but um, I just want to thank God. So before I moved here, there were two things I was praying, like in faith. One is to make sure I wanted to get a job before I come here, and I did. And then the other one is for my student loans to be forgiven. Now, that was a serious prayer for me because, uh, because I'm an, um, in education, you know, there's a public service loan stuff. Okay, so at first it was like, you have to make 120 consecutive payments, all those things, I'm like, oh my gosh, okay. But then COVID happened, and I know it was a pandemic, well, I don't know if it's a pandemic or not still, but, um, you know, we went through a lot, people died, all those things, but on top of that, <laughs> sometimes I feel like the pandemic was a blessing at some source. I don't know how to explain it. But, um, you know, things, that's when they were like, okay, well, it doesn't have to be consecutive. Then they said, okay, because of the pandemic, even though it's zero dollars, they're counting it as a payment, all those things. So I finally did all my forms and everything, did my last form, and last week, I got a letter saying, congratulations, it's all forgiven, it's zero, y'all, the amount I had, I feel like it could be more than a down payment on a house, so thankfully, uh, God worked it out because I thought I would have to include this school year as part of it, and what happened? I was praying like, God, I hope this school year is not part of it, and what I've worked before is, because the school I work at, yes, it's a charter school, but we're managed by a profit company, so it was like harder to get, um, um, for them to say like, okay, yeah, we're gonna count this school, even though it's nonprofit, but we're managed by a profit uh, organization. But anyway, long story short, um, so I just want to thank God because those were my two things and it came to a point like, I know sometimes when we say, oh, we're stepping out in faith, we still have a tendency to have a plan B, C, D, E, F, G. When we're stepping out in faith, it's just plan A. 
that's it. You're stepping out of faith. And I read a book called Unrealistic Faith, and it really helped me to realize, like, um, you know, when you're stepping out of faith, let God take over. Keep praying. It might take years. It might take weeks. You do not know because... You're not God. We're not God. Only God knows. And I am so grateful. I called like a bunch of people, hey, I'm doing the most. I'm being so excited. And that happened last Monday, and I'm still praising God about it because I still can't get how it was forgiven, but it was because it's God. And I'm so grateful. And I am not, I already told my, uh, my siblings and my friends, like, if I tell y'all I want to go to school again to get this other degree, and I need to take a student loan, please tell me no, because I am not going through this again. I will pay and scrape out of my pocket instead of uh, taking a student loan. Anyone young in here, please do not. Mm -mm. The interest, everything, please do not, okay? So anyway, thank you, and I want to thank God. Thanks, Lourdes. And it's so good to praise God for those things that happen in your life I'm not saying they're all good, but you can praise God even for the bad things. I um, was going to go to Emma's graduation last weekend and found out that it was on the steam meet where I need to be at work that weekend. And I was talking to my boss and offhandedly said, yeah, it's the same weekend as my granddaughter's graduation. He said, are you going? And I go, no, I'm supposed to be here. And he knocked me off my feet by saying, you can go. You don't need to be here. We don't need you. <laughs> Didn't feel good, but. <laughs> so last weekend I went. On not really realizing it was 11 hours in a truck there and 11 hours in the truck back and probably six to eight hours in the truck going to graduation in New York. But um, it w went well. Uh, it was hard because it was so much time sitting beside two kids that are at odds with each other most of the time. <laughs> and it was long, but it was a blessing that I was able to see her graduate with her master's degree and praising God that I'm still here to do that. Thanks, Margie. Any, anyone else? I was just <clears throat> thinking about the blessings I had this week since you mentioned blessings and I had a echo done on my heart and my heart's still going. There's a <laughs> it's still going strong, they said, which is good news. My murmur is a tad worse, but they they're just watching it still. But it takes a lick and keeps on ticking my heart. And <laughs> I also got some things done that I needed to get done this week, and um, praise God for that and for the beautiful weather we've been having. So thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Yes, I'm just thankful the day it will be here. Yes, you know, it's, the week has been long. And sometimes I see, feel that I'm not going to make it. But the Lord has been gracious to me, and I'm so thankful that, that the Lord is in my life. And I thank you. For, I want to thank my daughter so much for all she does for me. And I just thank her so much. Thank you, Mike. Good 
morning. Um, my, I always say this, and I know you have all heard me say it, every day above ground is a good day for me to praise my Jesus. So I praise him no matter what I'm going through. I say, Jesus, I'm not complaining because it could be worse. I know that. I'm thankful for what I have, the good and the bad, because I know you're building character in me. Thank you, Roxanne. Last call. Thank you, church. Before we continue, there's um, a reading that we need from last week. Um, we have a second reading for transfers, and this, and we have Ariston transferring in. It's been requested for a long, long time, but it finally was received. So we're, so we're asking a request for Ariston. And transferring out is Kara Buckaloo, and then um, Cher and her two daughters, Adriana and, and Pepper. And it's Samara? Okay. Oh, okay. But anyway, I know her by Pepper. And so anyway, it, is there a motion to accept these transfers? Okay, in a second. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion's carried. Transfers are accepted. Okay, now our next one that we'd like to do, our song, is How Sweet Are the Tidings, on page 442, if you're using your hymnal. pilgrims here as he wanders in exile from home. Soon, soon will the Savior in glory appear, and soon will the kingdom come. He's coming, coming, coming soon I know, coming back to this earth.
Oh, happy Sabbath, church. Sabbath. Welcome to St. Joseph Seventh-day Adventist Church. Just so happy to have you on this beautiful Sabbath day. And oh, the sanctuary, and God's invited us here, and we can look out in the beauty of, of God's wonder and creation. Uh, what a blessing. And uh, just glad to see the church members, glad to see our, our visitors here. And welcome to those who are on Zoom. I've, I've been given specific instructions by my mother. When your mother gives instructions, you need to take them, amen? She said, Jim, when you preach today, don't wander away from this microphone. And, so, and I, uh, sometimes we have lapel mics on for our preachers, and, and for some reason it doesn't come across as well on Zoom. And so I'm going to be standing right here, Mom, and, 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 uh, and, and hanging on tight to the pulpit. But... Oh, God bless you all. And I tell you, God is full of surprises. And this morning, he gave me a, a divine surprise. And, and, and my buddy, Keevan, uh, who I haven't seen since 1984, probably. And we were, I was a camp counselor at, at Camp Asabo. And, and Keevan, I looked up to, not just literally, but figuratively, because he was in charge of the waterfront. I thought, wow, that would be a great job to be in charge of the waterfront. <laughs> I'm sleeping with these little kids all night and getting woken up. And, but uh, Keevan, I just introduced myself, and he introduced himself, and he said, do you remember me? I said, absolutely. So welcome to our church, Keevan. He just moved into the area, and him and his family, and uh, this church is already family to you, brother, and, and we're, we're just happy to have you. And I, I, I shared with him because he, he played Jesus in, in one of the, the um, skits for the, the kids and in uh, the crucifixion of Christ. And, and I told him not only did that imp impact the kids, it impacted me as a a 17, 18 year old kid uh, not really understanding and knowing Jesus. And so what a blessing. So as we enter into the worship service, let us kneel together. <clears throat> Our dear Heavenly Father, we join you and all the heavenly hosts in worshiping you on this beautiful, beautiful Sabbath day, dear Jesus. It's beautiful not only because of the weather, dear Lord, it's be beautiful because your presence is here with us this morning. And dear Lord, we want to worship you in spirit and in truth. So set aside anything that may distract us, dear Lord, and open our minds, open our hearts to what you have to share with us today. And may we be transformed by your grace, by your mercy, and your deep, deep, deep love for this church. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Please stand and join us in singing hymn number 290, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus.
may be seated. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Oops. <laughs> My poem is today is to my family and friends. Sometimes I forget to tell you how much I love you. Then thank you for bringing in my life. You are special to me with big hugs. You guys are all my family and my family in big hugs too. And everything like that. Can the deacons come forward please? Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this nice, beautiful day today and all the nice things we have done today. And I hope we have a good day and for the week and have a good, safe Memorial weekend too. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Have you ever seen babies? Yeah, they are so cute, chubby, and cuddly, and they can't do anything. Do they like to cry? Can they do any? Can they change themselves? Uh, Daniel, what can babies do? Can they do anything? Daniel, what do babies do? Nothing, right? They can't do anything. Besides, they can uh, crawl around. That's all they can do. They can't run, right? They're still in the crawling stage. All right, so how small are babies? I want you to all get into a position as to how, how small babies are. Can you get as small, can you make yourself as small as you can be? All right, scrunch down, scrunch down. Amelia, scrunch down, small. All right, and then grow up. I want you to stand up. All right, okay. All right, you can sit down. Our memory verse, no, Frankie. Our memory verse is from Luke 2:52. It says, "And Jesus grew." Can you repeat after me? And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature, and in favor with God and man, and in favor 
with God and men. All right. I believe Jesus came here as a baby so that we could identify as him, right? When he was a baby, he was helpless. He couldn't do anything, right? And then he started crawling, and then he, he was able to walk, and then he would tiptoe to get stuff off the counter, and then he was able to get taller and wiser, right? And do you know how we get wise? How do we get wise? Reading? Okay, reading, we read the Bible, right? What, Charlie? Okay, I want you to learn this. Make sure you read your Bible. Memor memorize one verse, okay? Because we get wiser as we memorize God's word. Do you know that? And sometimes, even if it doesn't make sense, and you do what it says, when you look back, you'll be like, oh my goodness. I'm so glad I listened to God's advice and I did this and this because that was wise, right? All my friends didn't follow through and look where they are now, right? So always know that when we listen to God's word, we become wiser, right? So remember our verse, and Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with who? God and men. When you do, when you follow the Bible, the whole world will admire you. Do you know that? Because you are honest, you are truthful, and, and though that's a rare character to have, right? Okay, who wants to pray? Charlie, come pray. Charlie, come. All right, let's pray. Amen. Okay. You can go back and sit down. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Psalm 33, verses 13 to 15, and I'm going to be reading from the New International Version. From heaven the Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place he watches all who live on earth, he who forms the hearts of all, who considers everything they do. Amen. Good morning again, church. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Let's, let's begin with prayer. Dear Lord, we're just so grateful again to be in your presence. Fill us, fill us, Lord, with your love. Fill us with your words. Ah, just fill us with your presence, with your joy, with your peace. We love you, dear Jesus. Speak through me, dear Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So in the book of Revelation, to be specific, Revelation chapter 3, verse 17, Jesus diagnoses the church in the last days with a diagnosis that is critical and potentially terminal. Jesus states, because you say I'm rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing. So why, as a church, would we say that? We have the doctrines, we understand prophecy, we eat healthy, we keep the true Sabbath. We're rich, we're wealthy, we're in need of nothing. The diagnosis, and do you not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, and naked? Wow. In other words, 
Do you, do I, do we know that our diagnosis is life-threatening, spiritual, relational, poverty? I've been working in healthcare, the healthcare industry for a long, long time, back in the dark ages actually. <laughs> but it's a beautiful industry and I'd like to draw on healthcare analogies that everyone can relate to. As with any medical diagnosis, multiple tests are administered to confirm the diagnosis. Along with Revelation 3, Matthew chapter 5 verse 3 adds more credibility to the diagnosis. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In other words, blessed are those who recognize their spiritual deprivation. What Jesus is not saying, but fully understood is, for those who do not recognize their spiritual poverty and continue doing the forms of religion, feeling a sense of su spiritual superiority, they are fooling themselves. Theirs is not the kingdom of heaven. So what is the diagnosis? Not knowing or not wanting to accept our current spiritual condition. We've all been there as we receive a physical or emotional diagnosis from a physician. How serious do we take it? At times we can be in denial, not accepting the reality of the diagnosis. Church, our, con our condition is chronic, it's not acute. Chronic means long term. It doesn't go away. Acute means short term. Our condition is chronic and not acute. We have a tendency when life is going good to forget our chronic illness and feel we can go it alone. Our selfish pride wants to do everything it can to ignore this life-threatening diagnosis given by our master physician, Jesus Christ himself. Our selfish pride fools, fools us to think that we can do this life, this Christian thing on our own, not realizing we are on life support going through the motions of attending church, paying tithe, looking good on the outside, but not fully grasping our desperate spiritual condition. Jesus doubles down on the diagnosis with a parable beginning in Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. Michelle, if you could read that for us. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the, bar the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Thank you so much, Michelle. So all ten virgins, were they in the church? Yeah, the, the five foolish, the five wise, they're called virgins in the Bible because they're all part of the church. All ten virgins were in the church. All ten virgins were sleeping. So what's the difference between the five wise and the five foolish? Why did five have reserve oil and five did not. The Bible's very clear, the oil is the Holy Spirit. 
The Bible is also clear that the lamps are the commandments, the doctrines of the church. Proverbs 6, verse 23 confirms that. For the commandment is a lamp and the law a light. All ten virgins had a very good understanding of the commandments and the doctrines of the church. All had their lamps, right? The five foolish had the forms of a religion without a relationship. This is why they were blinded to their diagnosis in Revelation chapter 3. Do you not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, and naked? Well, no, I did not know because I was focused on the commandments, keeping the Sabbath, going to church. And again, I'm not saying that that's wrong. Those are, one, those are wonderful things. But Jesus says, but have I not told you in Scripture, if you love me, keep my commandments? Everything starts and ends with a love relationship with Jesus. When we accept, confess, and admit our spiritual poverty, we will desire to seek after his righteousness and not our own. The book, His Robe Mind, gives a clear definition, a clear definition that I've ever read on righteousness by faith. And it says, what is righteousness by faith? It is the work of God in laying the glory of man in the dust and doing for man that which is not in his power to do for himself. When men see their own nothingness, they are prepared to be clothed with the righteousness of Christ. It's similar to Alcoholics Anonymous. The first step to recovery is, admit, is admitting I'm an alcoholic. I'm not, by God's grace. But we pray for those that have, have addictions like this as, as, as they are still children of God. It's the same with our spiritual deprivation. As with Alcoholics Anonymous, hello, my name is Jim. And I am poor in spirit and so desperately in need of the Holy Spirit in my life that I can do nothing without him. When we begin each day knowing that we are empty of the Holy Spirit, empty of Jesus dwelling within us, knowing we cannot get even out of bed and breathe another breath without Jesus filling us with himself, we will not hesitate beginning each day with Jesus and abiding with him throughout the day. The key difference between the five wise and five foolish versions was the five were asking, pleading, and receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit daily. Daily, hour by hour, sometimes minute by minute. We sinful human beings are leaky vessels. We leak oil like an old Chevy. Oil can leak very slowly. That's, that's the challenging thing. Oil can leak from us very slowly, almost imperceptibly, over time to the point where we think that we're okay. The Bible says all awakened, all ten, not only the five wise, all thought they had the power and they had the presence of the Holy Spirit. The five wise were filling their leaky vessels with the presence, the love of Jesus, focusing on the cross and his Holy Spirit daily. The five foolish thought they were okay and not seeking a daily loving relationship. They did not, they did not view their disease as, of selfishness as chronic. Their need of a savior was sporadic and not continuous. We have a tendency, I have a tendency, when life is going well to forget our chronic condition. And our daily communion with Jesus becomes every other day, maybe every other hour, maybe weekly, maybe monthly, or just plain superficial. Our relationship becomes lukewarm. So Jesus, in his infinite mercy, and his grace, and his great desire to have an intimate relationship, allows us to go through various trials, to go through various sufferings, to draw us back to him. This is why Jesus sounds the alarm on our lukewarm condition. I wish you were hot or cold, not this in-between stuff. We need a continuous filling and emptying of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The filling with quiet, devotional worship 
with just you and the Lord and the church community worship and others. We, we, we desperately need that. The emptying, as we share the love, compassion, and the love of Jesus, as we encounter people all throughout our day. Jesus himself lived between the mountain and the multitude. The mountain for his quiet, alone time connecting with his father, to be filled with his father, so then he could pour himself into the multitude, you and I. I just, when, in my mind's eye, I, Jesus never focused on himself. On the multitude, it was on his father, on his father, on his father, connecting with the Holy Spirit, his father, and when he was in the multitude, his focus was on you and I. Never a selfish focus on himself. We are to do the same. And I tell you, the older I get, the more I need more time on the mountain <laughs> to prepare for the multitude. And, uh, and, and I realize how sinful I am, and I, I, need, I need that alone time with Jesus more and more and more. Jesus pours the Holy Spirit into our lives when we are willing to serve and care and empty ourselves into others. If we keep the love and filling of the Spirit to ourselves, soon it will cease. Testimonies, page 30 says, to everyone who offers himself or herself to God for service, withholding nothing is given unlimited heavenly power for the attainment of measureless results. Amen? The attainment of measureless results. Another beautiful quote. The person who trusts God enough daily to surrender, to let go, and daily invites the Holy Spirit and his fruits in his life he will become, she will become the most powerful source for saving souls. Ah, oh, what a privilege God has given us. I'll be honest, church. Five wise virgins and five foolish virgins is a difficult ratio for me to accept. Jesus is saying basically 50% of our church are are wealthy in our own eyes and in need of nothing. That's one of every two. This in my mind is unacceptable for the St. Joseph Church. What Jesus is saying in his parable statistically is that 50% of our church thinks that I am rich spiritually have become wealthy and in need of nothing. I cannot place greater emphasis on this. You and I are in desperate need of a savior in the good times and the times of suffering. Every day we wake up, we wake up on life support, empty, wretched, miserable, poor, in desperate need of the Holy Spirit. We need to understand our spiritual poverty to the point that we cannot live and go about our day without spending quality time with Jesus. We cannot start our day without praising and thanking him. We cannot start our day without connecting with Jesus through his word and prayer. We cannot start our day without pleading to be baptized and pleading to be baptized consistently and filled with the Holy Spirit. We have to experience the presence of Jesus daily, hour by hour, to the point where Jim no longer exists, only Christ in me, my hope and glory. This, my friends, is the abundant life John talks about in John chapter 10, verse 10. Friends, we are living in end times. There is no question about it. We need to seek to know Jesus as a personal friend, as a father who desires more than his life itself, to have a loving, open, transparent relationship with you. The first time I ever experienced and began to understand who Jesus is was sitting in a Friday evening Vespers as a 15-year-old young kid at a boarding academy. I was raised Catholic. My dad went to a no-smoking clinic by an Adventist physician. Not only did he stop smoking, but he turned to Adventist. And our parents made a wise decision to send us kids to boarding academy. 
and not knowing much about Adventism, I was getting to know just what Friday, Friday evening Vespers was. Every Friday evening, Vespers would begin with the lights off and a spotlight shining on the face of Jesus, while the beautiful music playing, which we sung as our opening hymn, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Jesus and I made eye contact for the first time. He always had his eye on me, but it was a brand new experience for me. By looking into the calm, loving, accepting face of Jesus, and listening to the words of that song, I began a journey on getting to know Jesus. I did not know him, and I'm still seeking to this day as I'm a work in progress to get to know him more fully. I thought he was a distant, unapproachable God. Turn with me to the scripture reading in Psalms chapter 33, verses 13 through 15. The Lord looks from heaven. The Lord looks from heaven. He sees all the sons of men. And sometimes we think the Lord is looking from heaven and seeing all the sons of men, but maybe forgetting us because he's so big and he's so powerful that he sees everything, he knows everything. But well, let's continue. From the dwelling place, from the place of his dwelling, he looks on all the inhabitants of the earth. Verse 15, he fashions their hearts individually. Church, make it personal this morning on this Sabbath day. He's fashioning your hearts individually. He has, a, just, he has his eye on you specifically, personally. And he loves you unconditionally. He spread out his arms and died for you specifically. He fashions their hearts individually. He considers all their works. We are all seeking for a place to belong, a place where we are loved and accepted. This church needs to be that place that is set apart from the world, where every child, every teenager, every adult, every elderly that walks through our doors experiences the loving, accepting, open arms of Jesus. Sometimes people will not even read a page in the Bible, but they'll see Jesus through you, and it can change a life. Jesus says, come to me, enter into his loving embrace where you will finally belong. You'll be unconditionally loved. And as you abide, as you remain in his presence, you'll be transformed into his beautiful image. Years ago, Sue Moon, and I know they're listening on Zoom, and we're praying for you, Sue and Jerry. Sue Moon made a handcrafted journal. I still have it today even though it's falling apart. I'm sorry, Sue, but I'm, I'm trying to piece it together. But within the journal, on, on the back cover, and this is the back cover right here, she attached a hymn, and it's hymn 316. And I don't want to sing it because you guys would leave, but I, 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 I do want to read it because every morning before I head out into the multitude, I read this hymn. And it says, live out thy life within me, O Jesus, King of kings. Be thou thyself the answer to all my questionings. Live out thy life within me, and all things have thy way. I, thy transparent medium, thy glory to display. The temple has been yielded and purified of sin. Let thy Shekinah glory now shine forth from within. And all the earth keep silent the body henceforth be, thy silent, gentle servant, move only as by thee.
its members every moment held subject to thy call, ready to have thee use them or not be used at all. Held without restless longing or strain or stress or fret, or chafings at thy dealings or thoughts of vain regret, but restful, calm, and pliant, from bend and bias free, awaiting thy decision when thou hast need of me. Live out thy life within me, O Jesus, King of kings. Be thou the glorious answer to all my questionings. Church family, each morning Jesus is waiting to exchange his life for, our, for your life. He's waiting to create in us a clean heart, his heart, and renew a steadfast spirit within us. Surrender this day and let him in. Amen.
Thank you for that very special, special music. Uh, this time in our worship service, we get on our knees and we talk to our Father in Heaven, and we can share with Him private things. We can share with Him our sorrows and our griefs. We can share with Him our praise and our thank yous. And I'd like to give you an opportunity, a few seconds or so, to say something in your heart, personal, and, while, and during that time I'll be quiet, and then I'll pick up and, and resume our, our prayer. Something different today, I guess. So if you can, join me as we kneel and pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you for calling us today to come out of Babylon, to come to your house to worship you. Thank you, Father, for being interested in us, for wanting us, for desiring us to spend eternity with you, for giving us that hope that we could actually someday be there with you. What a wonderful thing it is that you have sought us each individually, that you know us each individually, and that each one of us is important to us. We look at the words in Scripture. We see what you have done. We see what you have promised. And lo and behold, it is great. It is awesome and wonderful and true. How can we turn our back on you? Thank you for doing so many things for us. Thank you for your spirit who pleads with our heart, who speaks with us every day. Come, come. You're knocking at the door. Help us to open our hearts for you. Dear Father, you see all the sorrow. You see all the suffering that we go through. And sometimes on our part, from where we are, we think it's unbearable. But yet, when we look at what Jesus suffered, we don't have much to say. He gave it all for us. So Father, understand where we're coming from. Hear our prayers, understand that we would like to be with you soon, and we would like to sit at the foot of Jesus and hear his beautiful voice and see his wonderful face. Dear Father, as we've come through this week, we've had trials, we've had temptations, We've had all kinds of feelings, sorrows, big and small, victories here and there. But yet, really, we are victorious with Jesus. Help us to keep him in front, to keep our eyes focused on Jesus. Help us to call on him, to remember to call on him when we have those trials. Help us to be strong and increase our faith in Jesus. Your Father, we're going to take a moment for each one of us to speak with you, to share with you a few thoughts, gratitude, and thanks. Dear Father, I thank you for all those blessings that you've given us. I thank you for the blessings of moms and dads, brothers and sisters, and children, and cousins, 
aunts and uncles. And I thank you that you love them too. I pray, Father, that you would help us to get the word out of your wonderful love, that those people that don't know you, that we know, may not be left here in the future. Your Father, thank you for what you've done for us. Help us to stay close to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please stand and join with us, our closing hymn today, which is hymn 672, Spirit of the Living God. sing that one more time as our benediction. That was so, so beautiful. That, may that be our benediction. benediction for today. Please bow your heads. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace today and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.